Hi, my name is Sarah Truman. My name is TJ Erdahl. And I'm Charity White. Welcome, Welcome to National, National Play, Play Week! Week. Uh. We've just created a K-12 resource here at Aramont. Our group is called Intersections. We had 14 <laughs> other K-12 educators on campus with us, uh, and we discussed resources, resources for K-12 teachers. K Tried to do some problem solving. And this is what they had to say. I think learning from my students is probably my favorite thing. Actually having students think conceptually. I'm able to be creative with the kids. I can see them like opening up more. They have a potential that they might not have known. How cool to be that teacher that inspired them to go on in art. What really matters is getting them to use their brains and getting them to form opinions of their own and to think about how they can express that through art. My room is really a place where they can explore themselves in a, a different way. I really try to get them to understand the power that they have through making, and I encourage them to speak what they want to say to the world. You can teach them about passion for life and passion for something they can carry forward, and to have that impact and connection uh, is one of the best experiences I've ever had. Kids force you to be outside of yourself, which I actually really thank them for that. Being able to sort of give that freedom to students and just offer materials and encourage them to use their own creativity and ideas without such strict guidelines. I think. For me, it's the personal connections with kids and helping them sort of grow and understand themselves. It's easy to give up in a couple of years if it ain't working, but one of the joys that I find is once you have gone through a cycle of four or five years, then you get those rewards of students coming back to you. During my tenure of 14 years, five of my students became art teachers. A couple of them came back and were frustrated. They didn't curse me, but they said, how do you do it? How do you make it work? My class size is 40 kids. I'm trying to make sure that they're all on task. You know, keeping my eye out for administrators, popping their head in, making sure that everyone is caught up, making sure everyone understands what we're doing, making sure everyone's like emotionally okay. The class sizes. Class sizes. Navigating a very fast paced schedule where classes are short and um, things are condensed. The retention of one demo from one class into a week later when you see them again is sometimes um, difficult. So I find that as a, a big challenge in, in K-12 teaching is to see the kids enough not uh, have a lot of time, a class period of time with kids, so I've really had to learn how to prep and kind of cut the fat out of projects and just kind of get down to the core ideas. For me, the biggest challenge is um, trying to balance skill building and content. There's always massive challenges teaching anywhere, I feel like, whether it's your time being taken away, uh, lack of resources, number of people in the studio, but for me, the biggest thing I feel my challenges are are dealing with day-to-day -day students that have trauma in their life and feeling so unprepared to support them. Not only do I have to deal with the child, but I also have to deal with the parent. I think the perception of teachers in our culture has also been devalued quite a bit and I can, I can feel a lot of that resonating. I sometimes feel like I'm having to defend myself or have to justify my choices or um, have to convince people, not just my students, but you know my peers, that art is important, that art education is important. I do think that you know we live in a society where art is not valued at this point in time, especially in the current political climate. I'm trying to show my kids the, the value of art. Um, my name is Charity White, and I teach at Columbus Academy in Columbus, Ohio. So when I was 15 years old, I made a 15 year life plan. And in that life plan, I was going to go to school for ceramics and art education. And then I was going to teach in the public schools for a while. And then I was going to go get my MFA. And then I was going to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and now that I am 33 years old and I'm three years out of having completed that life plan, um, I am back in the public school, or the, not public school, but I'm back in the K-12 school and loving it. My name is Shauna Higgins. I'm the education director for a small nonprofit in Cincinnati, Ohio called Visionaries and Voices that supports adult artists with disabilities. I got my education in art education and ceramics both at the University of Illinois in Champaign 
Um, so I got a BFA in both of those, and then I went on to student teach in Chicago. Since then, I've taught in a lot of outreach settings. I taught for a nonprofit in Chicago for three years that was arts enrichment in public schools, which is similar to what I do now, um, but just with a specialized population now. And um, I've taught at the at all levels. I've taught pre-K through adult. I've kind of had my hands in a lot of a lot of different educational settings um, throughout the last 11 years that I've been a teacher. My name is Sarah Beth Truman. I teach at Gainesville High School in Gainesville, Florida. My wife had decided to go back to school and get her doctorate in nursing from the University of Florida and we moved back to Gainesville and she suggested I look at teaching high school and I said they don't even have art programs anymore much less ceramics. The very day I looked, Gainesville High School posted a position. I wandered into the high school. I had no idea you're supposed to apply online and wait for them to call you. I just wandered in with my portfolio and they hired me that day. My name is Autumn Higgins. I teach at St. John the Baptist Catholic School in New Brighton, Minnesota. Um, I teach kindergarten through eighth grade art. After I finished a residency at Northern Clay Center, I was doing some summer camp classes in art and some other outreach. and. Um, I was pretty surprised by how much I liked teaching kids and I just googled art teacher Minneapolis and found a job at a Catholic school and since I don't have a K-12 license I was like perfect I'll do that job and then I had the job. My name is Casey McCona. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. I teach at Shorecrest Preparatory School. I taught college for a number of years and I love teaching and I found that a lot of what I'll simply call the extra part of teaching college really got in the way of me enjoying the teaching part. And so I took some time off from teaching, had some children, and now I'm back to it. Started with middle school, now I teach high school, and I find I can connect much more closely with these kids than I ever could with my college students. I'm Holly Thompson. My pronouns are they, them. I live in Front Royal, Virginia, um, and I teach at Randolph-Macon Academy, which um, is an Air Force JROTC military school. I didn't know that I wanted to teach K through 12 um, really until I was doing it. I had an inkling uh, that I was interested when I was in graduate school. I really enjoyed teaching college classes, but I was also teaching um, kids workshops during the summers and I, I loved working with the kids. That was so motivating for me and my work um, and just really rewarding. So I think that's when I had an idea um, I wasn't so sure about teaching high school until I was in it, and now I've really fallen in love with it. Uh, my name is Brian Horn. I live in Memphis, Tennessee, and I teach grades 9 through 12 at Power Center Academy High School. I got my Bachelor's of Fine Arts from Delta State University in Cleveland, Mississippi, and my Master of Fine Arts from the University of Mississippi. Getting into K-12 was uh, sort of a happenstance for me. I always knew that I wanted to be in education, not necessarily K-12. through but after graduate school, I was looking at jobs. Um, my wife landed a really good job where she's at, so we decided that we wanted to stay in the area. And so I, as soon as I started thinking about going into that realm, a friend of mine actually approached me, and he was at the school that I was at, and he had told me that someone had just left. So it was just kind of a natural flow for me that I had gotten into, and he had hooked me up with a, a pretty decent job. My name is Lauren Carley, and I just moved to the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and I'm got a job teaching middle school and high school art. I got my undergrad degree in art education and then I taught for two and a half years in Guatemala City at an international school and I moved back to the States to pursue my own art. So I studied for two years at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln as a post -bac. and then after that I got my MFA at Kansas State University. Um, after that I was a full-time potter for three years in the middle of nowhere in rural New Mexico and then I started teaching at Desert Academy in Santa Fe. And since I just moved, I will be starting a new job soon. Um, Eric Rempe, I teach uh, ceramics at Princeton Day School. I have fourth grade classes, eighth grade classes, and uh, nine through 12. I have a BS in art education, a BFA in ceramics. Both of those are from Penn State, and a master's in fine arts and ceramics from San Diego State. My high school art teacher, um, pretty much changed the course of my life and felt like um, when I became a teacher each day I could repay the debt that I owed him. My name is Judy Condon and I teach 
at Baylor School in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I first started out as a biology major and as an undergraduate in Atlanta and um, quickly found out that that was not exactly what I wanted to do. But then I, I was pulled towards doing art and I ended up taking um, art classes at Georgia State University and then transferred over to the University of Georgia. I have a, I have a degree in um, painting and minor in art history. Um, I have a master's in ceramics and drawing from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. I had always had aspirations for becoming a college professor um, and looked for a job for 10 years. And then I started doing adjunct teaching at the university and I wasn't very happy doing that. It was really, it was really hard to do that because I was double booking and um, not making a whole lot of money and traveling too much and it was, it was really hard. It was a hard life. Um, I uh, then heard about a position open at Webb School of Knoxville, and um, I interviewed for that job, got it, and um, was just absolutely uh, amazed at um, the students there. They were, they were really bright and energetic and enthusiastic, and they were so very different from teaching in community college kids who were there because they were 18 and that's what you were supposed to do and they really weren't into it. It was really like a breath of fresh air after coming from, you know, a bit of an oppressive community college setting. I'm Sarah Johnson. I live in Deerfield Beach, Florida and I teach at Seminole Ridge High School up in Loxahatchee, Florida. In 2006, I went to Clemson University. I was a biological sciences major for two years. Um, my parents pushed me towards the sciences and being a doctor or a surgeon um, and for a while I thought I wanted to be a pediatric surgeon so I was like okay biology and then two years and I was like you know as much as I do love science and that's probably part of also why I really love clay is because it's so like heavily science based um, I was like forget it I'm going into art I've always loved art I went and talked to the department head at Clemson showed him my work and got into their program graduated from their program with my BFA in ceramics in 2011. I did a semester with them as a post -bac student and then went to Florida Atlantic University for my graduate studies and graduated from there in 2015. I never really thought about working, once I got into art, working in K-12 just because it wasn't talked about a lot through the programs. You know, I think a lot of us, we, see our professors as professors and so then we assume like once we get out then we will find jobs as professors <laughs> and those jobs are very very hard to get and almost never in the place where you are so I had a friend who was an undergrad while I was in grad school who was a teacher and she told me about how I could get temporarily certified through the state of Florida because I was receiving my master's degree so basically that kind of got the ball rolling for me. My name is TJ Erdahl. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I teach at Berkeley Preparatory School in Tampa. My educational background is high school, of course. Went on to the University of Northern Iowa for undergrad, where I double majored BFA in ceramics and a BA in art ed. I also took a little bit of time off in between things and uh, ended up going to the University of Florida for graduate school, um, where I was a ceramics major. After that, I came to Aramont School of Arts and Crafts uh, as a resident artist. I started off thinking I was going to do K-12, and then after spending time in the studio and thinking more about what I want to do with my life, I didn't want to do K-12. But then, when I moved to Princeton, New Jersey, where my wife uh, got a job teaching K-12, um, I started subbing at the school, doing some sabbatical replacements at the school and realized that it was actually a really good fit for the way I like to teach. And uh, I was really interested in kind of pursuing teaching kids how to be more self-sufficient. I'm Mike Gesiakowski. Uh I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I teach at John Burroughs School, which is a seventh through 12th grade uh, independent school. I have a BFA in graphic design uh, from Northern Illinois University. Um, I then uh, worked in graphic design for 10 years and changed and went and got my MFA from Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville uh, in ceramics. I got into K through 12 by dumb luck, really. I got contacted by an alumni of my grad program that I just had met a few times. So I think that K 
keeping those uh, networking connections live constantly um, can prove helpful. Oh, you get your summer off and you leave at three o'clock every day. And that is absolutely not true. Like I leave my house in the morning at six, get to work by seven. And most of the time I don't get home until 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. And that's on the nights where we don't have something going on, like a theater show or a dance performance or something where I'm trying to also be an active member of my community and supporting our program. Um, and summers off is hilarious. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about being an art teacher is that, you know, it's all rainbows and sunshine and that I just get to goof off and not do any real work. The weird art lady or wearing goofy clothes and funny glasses, um, like that's what our teacher is. Um, not necessarily that we're actually artists. Um, I also think there's a common misconception that it's just gonna be an easy class. One of the biggest misconceptions I find in primary and secondary education is that you can't also be a maker. Um, so for me, I feel like my making fuels my classroom and my classroom fuels my making. So finding that balance and finding time for both, even if it's just a little bit, um, they ebb and flow and just accepting doing what you can when you can um, and taking advantage of every moment. I think it's that the teachers don't enjoy it. I think that's one of the misconceptions that some, that some teachers don't enjoy doing it. And maybe that's true for some teachers, but I think for me the misconception is that I, that I, t I took the job because it's all I could get or something, or it's like the job that I had to take. Um, I do it because I like it. And uh, so I think the misconception is that it's a fallback job or something. Quite a few people, I think, believe that it's uh, a stepping stone to somewhere else, that I'm doing this because it's a path to get to another teaching position and 17 years I've been teaching high school I would get called once or twice a year or emails and people would say such and such a university is hiring that you should go you should apply there and my answer was always the same you should come visit me and see what I have it's pretty remarkable the biggest misconception about primary and secondary education is that it is something entirely different than what's happening in the university. There is not much that is different between my university level classroom and my high school level classroom. And it's about meeting a student and a child where their maturity level is at, and that can be wildly different regardless of what grade they're in. Something that I wish was part of my art education was really just opportunities. And I share that with my students is that we go and we have a passion for what we're doing and, and making, but there's more you can do with this information than just being a studio artist. And you can do studio artist, teacher, curator, so many other things that this education is uh, setting you up uh, for than um, this narrow view that a lot of people have. Something I, I wish I had access to um, in my art education uh, in terms of K through 12 was just more uh, open-mindedness when it came to materiality. Um, I really try to get my kids outside of the classroom um, to work with foreign materials, to think about space in a way that they have never considered. So doing like installation work, um, doing less traditional projects. I think I really pushed the idea of researching something um, where I felt when I was a student it was more of this skill-based approach and I still teach skill. I think skill is very important. Craftsmanship is really important but I think that uh, actually having students think conceptually about their work just a little bit more. Like mine was never this concept where like do what I do, make it like I make it um, and you'll do fine but I want kids to be able to branch out and make decisions that are um, important to them and not necessarily important to me. I wish that as part of my art education that um, I had had an art <laughs> education. I didn't want to be that kind of instructor that just immediately went to a critique in a more negative light and I think um, I've worked really hard to learn how to speak to students in ways that are challenging authentic to the person that they are and going to grow them. I wish when I was in high school I was stretched to think more, to 
verbalize my um, interests, my thought pattern. I fell in love with the wheel in high school and I just wanted to make and make and make. And that is still one of my most favorite things to do. But when I got into college and I had to start really thinking about what was it that I wanted to say, what did I want to shout from the, the mountaintop as my um, message to the world, that was like a, a really difficult transition for me to make. So I really try to incorporate as much thought and discussion in my classrooms as possible. My high school art teacher, Mr. Eland, really influenced me and impacted me. Every week we'd read an article and answer questions and discuss it. And it really made art feel like not something that was just in my classroom, but also out in the world. And then he would take us to shows on Navy Pier in Chicago, SOFA. And I would see the artists and the artwork that they made in person and just being able to identify you know, I, I've, I know about this person and I've read about them and this is their artwork right in front of me. It was really impactful. I remember when I was in like second grade or something, um, there was an art teacher, a high school art teacher at my school and I just loved her. So when we were waiting for my friend's mom to pick us up, she was always late. So we'd be like hanging out for an hour waiting for her. So I would just go down to the art room and talk to Betty, the art teacher, and she had like a big old clawfoot tub full of reclaim. <laughs> it was like instead of a, a bucket, you know? And so I just like was like playing in it one day and then Donna came to pick me up and I was just like covered in clay. I actually started uh, in art pretty late. I always had an interest in it, but I never took my first art class until my junior year of college. Um, my high school did not have an art program. They had one art class that you could take multiple times it was basically drawing pencil drawing you know once I got into it uh, and found that I had an affinity for it um, and I think the one that pushed me was after my first semester uh, taking a uh, taking ceramics and a sculpture class the uh, head of that department coming to ask me if I wanted to change my major um, so that was the first that I had positive feedback in the art that I was making. Uh, usually it was just creating it on my own, but now it's creating for a class and then someone telling me that it had worth to it. When I was in fourth grade, I entered a new school and I'm a really shy person. Most people don't <laughs> think that when they meet me. Uh, I'm very socially awkward and it's, it's not something that comes easy for me. So moving to a new school was really difficult and my art teacher had recognized that um, she had taken the time to find out that I had taken a pottery class before. And although I was in fourth grade and had just touched the material before, I knew nothing actually about throwing or about clay, she had me teach all of my classmates how to throw. And so she put me in a position of leadership with them, which allowed me to kind of break down some of those boundaries that I had uh, and allowed for friendships to grow. One of my favorite memories from being an art student, specifically in high school, uh, since I'm a high school teacher, is the deep connection people had with our art room uh, and our art teacher. I feel like that was a place of safety, a place of support, and a place of understanding, no matter if that was your interest or not. And that's something I definitely try to carry forward in my own classroom. The most rewarding thing about teaching K-12 is just having an interaction with kids. I, kind of, I like to see their joy, um, their creativity, the weird art projects they make, the funny things they say to each other. I really enjoy teaching younger kids. I think it's really fun. Um, I have a good time, I joke around a lot. Um, I've learned to use sarcasm really well in the classroom and kids don't get it. <laughs> and they also get it at the same time. So that's really fun to kind of see them sort of pick up on my humor. I love seeing kids succeed, and it's not necessarily with their artwork. I just like to see kids like be self-sufficient and learn how to do something on their own and uh, be proud of like the work they're doing. And, this, and work hard, like I like to see kids work hard when they kind of catch on that you know, working hard in my classroom is more important than the, the final outcome of the project, then I see, I see really good results. The thing I find most rewarding is 
um, creating a sense of community with the kids. I I remember being a teenager, and you know, teenagers aren't all about adults. They don't really want to come to adults. They are very private. They talk amongst themselves about what's going on in their lives. They shut most adults out, and so. For me, I try really hard to make it like an open door policy, like if you need something, you can come to me. For me, one of the most rewarding parts is building those relationships with students, um, getting to know them as people and individuals, and then seeing them grow. Um, I always tell them visual art is the thing that communicates through all language barriers because anybody that sees a picture of, say, a tree doesn't have to speak that language in order to identify it as a tree. So. Visual communication is really powerful. I think the most important thing that you can do as an educator is talk to other educators, to bounce ideas off of each other, to open lines of communication, um, to see what's working for them, because we're, we, we all need to be sharing. You need support. You can't do everything by yourself. Like You might think that you can, but you need to create connections within the school, within your administration, within your department. Um, make a friend in your department so that you have a little bit of an alliance. Ask a lot of questions. Find out what you're interested in, what, what the school has to offer for you. Talk to other teachers. Um, find ways of connecting art into the school as much as possible. Like find avenues where what you do in your art class can fit in or what somebody does in their class can fit into your class. Um, so I think it's like extremely important, especially in this particular time frame with education, that we start showing where art fits into things more frequently instead of it being its own little separate entity. Make your own projects, but steal projects if you need to. <laughs> I think there's a tremendous amount of talent at every place that I've ever lived, and a lot of those people are more than willing to come into your classroom uh, to do demonstrations or to help you with something. Uh, I think sometimes we think of resources in the more traditional sense, but it might just be, you know, people that you could ask to ask for help or that you might be able to pay to come in to teach workshops and it doesn't doesn't always have to be somebody that's a that's a big production that you're flying somebody in and hosting them. It could be something that's somebody that's local and they just come in for a few hours and that might be the one thing that, that one kid never forgets.